Hi, I'm Megan and welcome to my kitchen. In today's What's for Dinner video, I'll be sharing with you what meals we had this past week. Our dinners were easy to make, budget friendly, and delicious. So if you're looking for some weeknight meal ideas for your family, just keep watching. For dinner this first night, we were doing a little at-home date night. We decided to watch a movie and do a charcuterie board. Now, I've mentioned before on my channel, we love charcuterie boards, snack plates, snacking boards, whatever you want to call them. Um, we love snacky dinners and lunches, especially when we're watching a movie or playing games. Now, every time I make these, they're a little bit different. Some things kind of stay the same just because we really like them, but really, I use what I've got on hand or what I've got in the pantry or fridge and want to use up. So this is a great family-friendly, budget-friendly thing to make. You don't have to do fancy meats and cheeses and things like that. You can just keep it really simple, especially if you've got littles. Um, here is what I'm using this time in particular. I've got some grapes, carrots, cucumber, some of these turkey sticks, some sweet gherkins, these uh, chocolate hazelnut cookies I got from Trader Joe's, some honeycomb, sliced Colby Jack cheese. I have just a little bit of brie cheese left over that I'm going to use. Some club crackers, some boars and cheese, honey goat cheese, cashews, marinated olives, some fig preserves, honey, and then a few candied pecans. And then I also have this little charcuterie trio meat. I think the only two things that I ended up buying were the charcuterie meat trio and the boars and cheese. I happened to pick that up at Target while I was there, but I had everything else in my fridge or pantry. So to make the board, I just take a large cutting board and set everything out. There's really no rhyme or reason. Um, it will look good pretty much no matter what you do. And then to go along with this, I was filming a couple upcoming videos. Uh, so I had bought the ingredients to make these little skewers. They're prosciutto, melon, basil, and then a balsamic glaze. They were really yummy. And because I had all the ingredients, I went ahead and made these little crostinis. I've shared them before on my channel. It's just toasted bread, some honey goat cheese, prosciutto, and then um, we top that with some arugula. If I've got it on hand, if I don't have it, I skip the arugula and then some of the balsamic glaze. And this was delicious. We had tons of leftovers that we snacked on for a couple days afterwards. And it was a fun little date night. For dinner this next night, I'm making my mom's paprika chicken. I'm going to start out, though, by making the side dish, making a cheesy vegetable casserole. This I saw on Kristen Sepp's channel. This is her dad's recipe. It was delicious. I'm going to start out by preheating my oven to 350 degrees. In this pot, I've got a potato that I peeled and then cut into chunks. I'm going to add in my frozen mixed vegetables and then season them with salt, pepper, and minced onion. I'm going to cover the vegetables in water, bring it to a boil, and then simmer it until the vegetables are tender. When the veggies are tender, I'm going to drain it really well, place them into the pot, and then the heat is off, by the way. I'm going to add in a couple tablespoons of butter, give that a stir. And a quick note, I did have the recipe, and it made a pretty generous 9x9 nine nine, uh, pan. I'm then going to add in my can of cream of chicken soup. If you don't like cream of chicken, I'm sure you could do cream of mushroom, celery, whatever you do like. Then I'm going to add in the sour cream, some shredded cheddar cheese, and I didn't have as much as what I wanted to use, but I knew I wouldn't need all of this Velveeta cheese, so I added a little of the Velveeta as well. And then I took about a quarter sleeve of townhouse crackers and crushed them up with my hands, and I'm going to give that a stir. I believe at this point, Kristen's dad said to turn this back on about low heat and cook it for a few minutes so the cheese can melt. But just with the residual heat, my cheese melted without me having to turn it back on. I gave it a taste. I felt like it needed a little more salt and pepper, so I added that and gave it one final stir. I'm going to spray my casserole dish with some cooking spray. You could butter it or use oil, whatever you prefer. I'm gonna add my cheesy vegetable mixture into the baking dish and then i'm going to sprinkle the Velveeta uh, shredded cheese on top now kristen's dad did say that he strongly suggests you using the Velveeta shreds 
to go on top and that you use townhouse crackers. I'm sure it would probably be just as delicious if you use whatever crackers and cheese you prefer, but I decided to try it the way she suggested and it was delicious. So once I've got my cheese on top, I'm gonna add some crushed crackers and then this is going to bake for about 30 to 40 minutes or until it's golden brown. And you do wanna let it sit for about 10 to 15 minutes before you serve it. Now for my mom's paprika chicken. I've shared this before on my channel. I'll try to find that video and link it down below. This is really, really simple. I know there are a lot of different versions for this, but this is just how my mom has made this uh, and she's made it ever since I can remember. In this plate here, I just have some all-purpose flour, salt, pepper, and paprika. I don't have measurements for you. I'm sorry, we just eyeball it. And mom, if you're watching this, I know I didn't add enough paprika. Uh, once I got it mixed up, I thought it needed more, but I second guessed myself and then in the final product when I tasted it, I was like, yep, should have used more paprika. It's called paprika chicken, so you really wanna add quite a bit. I would say at least maybe three tablespoons or so. Um, you wanna make sure your flour is kind of a deep pink color. So. All I'm gonna do is add some butter to a casserole dish. I place it into the oven. Usually I do it while the oven is preheating, but in this case, um, I had the vegetable casserole started. But you just wanna place it into the oven until the butter is completely melted. Once it's there, you're gonna pull it out of the oven, dip your chicken in both sides into the flour, add the chicken to the butter and then i like to take some of the extra butter and drizzle it over the top just so at the end you don't have any dried flour and then it just goes into the oven and bakes until the chicken is done usually about 30 minutes just cook it until it's at least 165 degrees to go along with it i cooked up some crescent rolls i know the sweet hawaiian crescent rolls came out I don't know a few years ago but I've never tried them before I've wanted to but I just kept forgetting to pick them up so I tried them um, again in the air fryer if you saw I think it was last week's what's for dinner video I mentioned that I've seen Tamara from Southern Wife Everyday Life uh, cook her crescent rolls in the air fryer she does it a little bit differently instead of uh, like unrolling the crescent rolls and then rolling them back up into a triangle she leaves the roll in a cylinder or tube shape and then slices them like you would cinnamon rolls places them into the air fryer I believe it was at like 350 degrees for three or four minutes gave them a flip cook them for another three or four minutes so easy and they are super delicious they're like really crispy on the outside but soft inside so yummy all right, here is a picture of my plate. I've got the chicken, the vegetable casserole, and the crescent roll. The chicken was delicious. It's simple, very simple, but really yummy. It just reminds me of, you know, being a child, my mom cooking. And I like to dip my chicken as I'm eating it in honey mustard. My husband likes to use barbecue sauce. That vegetable casserole, I don't know what it is about it, but it was delicious. My husband and I both really, really liked it. And I was super excited that there was leftovers. I, I, I told my husband, I said, it almost reminds me of like a really, really good chicken pot pie filling just without the chicken, if that makes sense. But it was delicious. This was such a good, comforting dinner. For dinner the next night, I made carne asada tacos. Now, I know if you all watch my channel on a regular basis, you're probably sick and tired of me talking about Kinder seasonings, but I've recently discovered them and I'm really enjoying them. I have been wanting to try their carne asada. I've heard several people mention it and talk about how good it is. So I figured, hey, let's make some tacos out of it. Now for the meat, I believe, I'm not certain, but I believe carne asada is more traditionally either flank steak or uh, like skirt steak. Sorry, I couldn't think of the word. Um, but they were really, really pricey. I price compared between Kroger and Publix and Walmart and they were all like 20 plus dollars. But I did find some of this sliced sirloin. I think I got it at Publix, yeah. And it was less than $8, so I just went with that. I decided to marinate it. So all I did was place the sliced steak into a Ziploc bag, added that seasoning, and I added just a little oil to give it a little moisture, and gave it a little zhuzh and placed it into the refrigerator. You could do this for as little as 30 minutes. I marinated it overnight. Now for the sides, I had this can of Bushes. It is the Southwest Zest uh, Sidekicks. I've had it in my pantry. I decided to just warm them up, keep it easy. And then before I cook up my steak, I like to set it out uh, at room temperature for about an hour or so. 
So to cook it up, all I'm gonna do is place some oil into my skillet. I've got the skillet over about medium high heat. Once it's good and hot, I'm going to sear the steak uh, just for maybe a minute or two on each side. It depends on how thick your steak is. Also depends on how you like your steak. We usually like ours on the medium side. So it just needs a little bit of time, not long at all. And then I'm going to remove the steak to a separate plate. And you do wanna do this in batches so that your steak really gets a good sear on it. You could of course also grill this out on a grill. I was going to, but it was raining like crazy this day, so I just cooked it inside. Here are the fixins I'm gonna use for our tacos. I've got some fajita size flour tortillas. We prefer flour, use corn if that's your preference. I'm just gonna heat those up. And then we have some guacamole salsa. My mom got this for us, it was good. I'd get that again. And then we have some cilantro lime sour cream, hot sauce, some shredded cheese, lime wedges, onions, cilantro, and tomatoes. Now, I believe, I'm not an expert, I'm not sure, but according to my understanding, the more like traditional taco toppings are like salsas and lime, onions, cilantro. So I wanted to do some of our tacos the more traditional route, and then I also wanted to do some the more like Tex-Mex American style, because I know that's what my husband prefers, like the uh, tomatoes, sour cream, shredded cheese, that kind of thing. For the second side, I tried a new recipe for Spanish rice. This video went up a few days ago. It's the uh, cookbook collab, Cooking for My Cookbooks. I'll have that video linked down in the description box below, so check it out if you'd like to see how I made this. Here are the plates. I just added the taco fixins to the tortillas along with that carne asada. And then we have some of the rice and beans, and this was delicious. We had leftover rice and uh, carne asada, and so we did steak uh, like burrito bowls one day for lunch that was delicious. For dinner the next night, I tried another new recipe for manna sandwiches. This is from The Plain Chicken. I'll have the recipe linked in the description box below. I'm sure you're familiar with her, but if not, go check out her blog. She's also on Instagram. I think she has a YouTube channel too. Yeah, she does, where um, like she shares the recipes that she posts on her blog. I've tried several of her recipes, and we have loved, legit loved every single one. I have never had one of her recipes fail me, and she has shared this several times on um, like her Instagram and I have wanted to make it. It was delicious. So I'm gonna start out by making the sauce. I did have the recipe by the way. The sauce is really easy. It's mayonnaise and then either Catalina or French dressing, whatever you've got or whatever your preference is. Some ketchup, spicy brown mustard, sugar. I'm gonna stir that until it's combined really well and then cover it and place it into the refrigerator until I'm ready for it for dinner. I've been craving broccoli salad, so I decided to make it as my side dish tonight. I've shared this before on my channel maybe a couple times. I'll link the recipe in the description box below. In this bowl, I'm gonna add in my mayonnaise, sugar, vinegar, salt and pepper, and then the recipe does not say uh, to do this, but I like to add in a couple tablespoons of milk just to thin out the sauce a little bit. And then this is just a personal preference, but I believe this recipe calls for four tablespoons of a white vinegar. I like my broccoli salad a little more on the sweet side, so I only do three tablespoons of vinegar. I cut the vinegar a little bit. Next, I'm gonna add in all the fixins. Add whatever you like in your broccoli salad. I am gonna add some shredded cheddar cheese, some bacon crumbles. You could, of course, cook up your own bacon. I'm just using this from Sam's Club. And then I like to add in some dried cranberries and sunflower seeds. And I just eyeball it. Use as much or as little as everything that you like. Um, like I said, the recipe will be linked down in the description box below where it gives suggested amounts for like the cheese and the bacon. But again, use whatever you like and how much ever you like. And then of course we need broccoli for the broccoli salad. Now I like to cut the broccoli up into small little like bite-sized florets. So I'm going to add the broccoli give it a stir until it's really well combined and then I'm going to cover this and place this into the refrigerator until we're ready for it for dinner. I usually like to make my broccoli salad at least a few hours in advance so kind of all the flavors come together. Now for the sandwiches. In this skillet, I've got my ground beef. Now the recipe didn't say to do this, but I like to season my ground meat when I'm cooking it. I'm gonna add in some salt, pepper, and then I wanna use up the little bit of Badia Complete in this bottle, so I'm gonna add some Badia Complete and cook this until it is brown. Now I was using lean ground meat, so I didn't have to drain it, but you may need to drain yours. Next, I'm going to add in the minced onion, water, and I did use a little bit more water than what the recipe called for. 
I'm going to add my soy sauce. Personal preference, I like to add light soy sauce or low sodium soy sauce, but use whatever you prefer. And then I'm also going to add in the parsley flakes, the dried basil, and the garlic powder. I'm going to give that a stir. And then you don't have to cook this very long. You just want to cook it for maybe about 10 minutes or so until the liquid evaporates. Give it a taste and adjust the seasonings to your taste if you feel like it needs it. Here is the finished meat mixture. And if you'll notice, this is not like sloppy joes. You're not gonna have a really liquid, uh, moist mixture. This is more like a loose meat sandwich. So I'm gonna set that to the side and then move on to assemble the sandwiches. Here's the manna sauce. We're gonna add that to our sandwiches in just a second. And then I've got the broccoli salad. Now, for the sandwiches, you'll need some kind of deli rolls. Really, honestly, you could probably use hot dog buns as well. But I have these Arnold sub rolls, and then you'll need some Swiss cheese. All you're going to do is lay out your bun. Now, the recipe said to lay out the bun, add the sauce, and then add the cheese and place it under the broiler. But I didn't know how I really would feel about the hot sauce. Um, so I decided to just add the cheese to the bread and then broil that. And I'm only making one sandwich right now because um, I ate a little bit before my husband he was at the gym so this is just going to go under the broiler keep an eye on it doesn't need very long at all once the cheese is melty and gets a little golden brown then we are going to add the meat and then slather that sauce on there and your sandwich will be ready these sandwiches were tasty they were really good my husband considers himself a sandwich connoisseur and he really enjoyed these and I halved the recipe by the way I don't think I said that maybe I did but I have the recipe and we had a sandwich each for dinner and I still have like half the pan that you saw me making of uh, sandwich meat uh, left so I just froze it and I'll use it for something else or make more sandwiches at a later time but these were yummy and I love that broccoli salad it's so good For dinner the next night, I made chicken and asparagus parmesan orzo. Now, I've shared this before on my channel. We made it a couple months or so ago, so I'll link my video in the description box below if you'd like a like, more detailed walkthrough how I made this. This recipe is from Julia Pacheco. I'll also have her video linked down below. It is a quick and easy weeknight meal. It's a one-pot meal, and it's done in less than 30 minutes, so I highly suggest you all give this recipe a try. If you haven't tried it, it's really good. For dinner the next night, I tried a new recipe for meatloaf. Now, while I'm getting everything mixed up, we'll kind of chat about this a little bit, but I want to go ahead and get started. So in this bowl, I'm going to add in my ground beef. Next, I'm going to add in a box of stovetop stuffing mixer. It doesn't have to be stovetop, just stuffing mix, and you can use whatever flavor you prefer. Now, the recipe that I was referring to said to use water. I prefer milk in my meatloaf, so I'm going to add that. We're going to add two eggs, some ketchup, and then the recipe did not call for this, but I like to add a couple dashes of Worcestershire sauce to my meatloaf. So I'm going to add that and then mix it until it's well combined. I know not everyone likes to see people handle raw meat. If you don't, just skip it. But uh, you want to be careful not to overwork your um, meatloaf mixture. It can make it tough and dense. Just mix it until it's combined really well. Now, little explanation about this. So I mentioned in my grocery haul, but I know not everyone watches that. So I just wanted to mention it here that I was afraid I might have a mutiny on my hands making this. And that is because my hu my husband and my family love, love, love my meatloaf. And I, I don't get it. I don't know what's so special about it. Make it the same way my mom taught me and my granny made it. Um, but they love it and have given me strict instructions to never change it. So I was kind of nervous trying a new recipe, um, but I've seen it on the internet. And here recently I I've seen Kristen Stepp make it and Kat from Southern Farming Kitchen. So I really wanted to give it a try and we liked it. It was good. Now, I will be honest, I do still prefer my recipe for meatloaf, um, but it was good. It was simple. And I think this would especially be good for people who are new to cooking or I know there are a lot of people who really need like strict measurements when they're cooking. Um, you know, I, I eyeball pretty much everything, especially when it comes to meatloaf, but I know a lot of people are more comfortable having measurements. So if that's you, I would really recommend you give this a try. Um, because like I said, it was easy and there wasn't really a whole lot to measure anyway. Um, but anyway, so once I've got it mixed together, I'm going to place it into a dish. You could put it into a loaf pan. I'm just placing it into a casserole dish that's been greased. I'm going to form it into a loaf shape and then add ketchup on top. This is going to go into a preheated oven at 350 degrees. It's going to bake for 60 minutes and then we're going to let it sit for about 10 minutes before we slice into it. 
I'm keeping my sides super simple tonight. I'm going to do some box au gratin potatoes. Now, I really like having just plain mashed potatoes with my um, meatloaf, but my husband really likes au gratin potatoes. So I switch it up. I'll do like au gratin potatoes, sometimes mashed potatoes. I don't know what I was thinking making two boxes just for the two of us. We had au gratin potatoes left over for days. And then for my other side, again, keeping it simple, I'm just going to open a can of peas, drain them, and warm them up with a little bit of butter, salt, and pepper. All right, here is the meatloaf once it was done and then the au gratin potatoes. Now, sometimes when I make au gratin potatoes and I did this this night, but I don't do it every time. When they're done, I will give them a stir and I add in just a little handful of shredded cheese if I've got it on hand and then stir that in and allow that to sit. You know, when you make box au gratin potatoes or even homemade really, you wanna let them sit for a little while to let that sauce thicken up and that cheese will melt as well. And they taste a little more cheesy and a little more homemade. And then I like to add just some parsley flakes on top. Not necessary, but like I said, I do it sometimes when I make them. It makes it a little more homey or homemade tasting. And then I've got the peas and here is the plate. This was good. Like I said, it was an easy meatloaf. And if you're kind of skeptical of the um, stuffing mix, don't be. You really couldn't tell that it was stuffing mix in there, if that makes sense. It just had a really good flavor. It was really well seasoned. As you can see, other than the couple dashes of Worcestershire sauce, I didn't add any other seasonings, no salt. It didn't need it. It was really well seasoned just the way that it was. All right, last but not least, we did a little date. We went out to a restaurant it's in Franklin, Tennessee, which is a little south of Nashville. We had an errand in the area. And whenever we're in that area, we love to go to some place called Cajun Steamer. I believe they have a few different locations. I'm not sure exactly where, but we love it. It's one of our favorite restaurants. It's so good. So to get started, my husband got a half dozen raw oysters. Um, I don't prefer raw oysters. Love them grilled, love them baked, fried, any other version. Just can't do the raw, but he loves them. So he did that, and then we split the, it's called, I think, the crawfish Cajun queso. It's so good. Then for the main entrees, I got, it's called the catfish pontchartrain. It is catfish that is um, stuffed with a crab and I think shrimp or crawfish. Either way, it's uh, stuffed with a seafood stuffing and then they have like a crawfish cream sauce that goes on top and I like it with their cheese grits. It's so, so flipping delicious. And then my husband got their big steam pot. We hadn't eaten lunch this day. We did kind of like an early dinner and so we were both famished. And um, when he does steam pots, he is slow as crazy. Christmas, golly, when like it comes to peeling the shrimp and the crab especially. And so to kind of hurry us up so we're not there for 12 years, <laughs> I will help him with his crab and shrimp. But I do take little fees. I call it my service fee. So I'll snack on some of the crab and shrimp <laughs> as I'm working on it. But anyway, that was our dinner this night. It was so flipping delicious. All right, that is it for this week's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this gave you some dinner ideas. Please hit the thumbs up button below and subscribe to my channel if you're not already and I hope you have a great rest of the day. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.